Hello. Today we're going to be talking about Jessica Jones, Season 2. Uh, this was released on Netflix last week, and I was able to watch the whole Season 2. And it's okay. It, actually, as far as all of the Marvel shows on Netflix, I would say this season is probably the worst. And that's not saying it's bad, it's just saying it's not as good as the other ones. Um, I know that Iron Fist... Uh, got a lot of hate from people, but it, it had a lot of action, especially with uh, the Colleen Wing character. But this one, it does, it's very drab, and to me, I found it very boring and predictable. Um, for one thing, the villain, um, you don't really know who it is until about halfway through the series, halfway through the season, and sh the villain isn't that compelling at all. Um, there's an interesting story behind the villain, but as a character that we actually get to see interacting with uh, Jessica Jones, there's not a lot there other than the, some predictable cliches. Um, but before that happens, there, it's just this basic uh, investigation with uh, Trish and Jessica and their the assistant Malcolm and there's not really a lot there there's some mystery but there's no humor there's very little action like the you could really tell from this and from the defenders that they've decreased the budget for these shows quite a bit because a lot of the action scenes just have uh, basically somebody faces off against Jessica Jones she gives them a look like she's gonna kick their butt and then the camera cuts away and you see the guy flying and that's re repeated throughout the show and um, it's really it was disappointing there's just no there's very little action at all like I remember seeing in the defenders that she didn't do a lot either and she even made the comment that she was like the only one that didn't know kung fu but even then she punched people you know there's action you know she did kick some butt in the defenders but in this she doesn't really and that's pretty disappointing and there's no there's very little humor um, there's very little action there's you know some interesting scenes interesting story but it's very drab it's very dreary it's the kind of thing that people complain about DC movies how they're dark and dreary and not much goes on and you know maybe some of the actions cool but the rest of it is just emo that's kind of what this is um, there's the character Trish Walker who has a subplot that is very predictable and it goes somewhere but eventually it goes somewhere I mean but it, other than that it's just you know, you can really see it coming. And the way that she talks, I find anyways distracting because you can tell that she's working really hard to hide an accent. And, you know, so she over some of her words. And so to me, sometimes that got a little distracting. Uh, the character of Malcolm has a story, uh, not too much of one. Uh, there's a subplot with a with a superintendent at the building that doesn't really go anywhere. There's another subplot with Carrie Ann Moss's character, the lawyer, and that really doesn't go anywhere. It's actually pretty boring and uh, it takes up quite a bit of the show. So overall, like I didn't find it very entertaining. I know Christian Ritter, um, she seems to fit the role good. Uh, she did in The Defenders, but to, and the first season of Jessica Jones I did like uh, the, mostly though because of the villain the Kilgrave villain really made that show more interesting but the second season they don't really like I said before they don't really introduce a villain until halfway through and it's a compelling villain but they don't really spend a lot of time on it they kind of go into a bunch of different cliches and you know, you expect, like, this villain has more strength than Jessica Jones. So you expect to see a fight. You expect to see 
multiple, even multiple fights, but there's very little. And like I said, I described the action scenes before. That's how it is. It's just, you know, it's a couple of punches and done. Or a couple of kicks and done. There's really not much to it. Or most, for the most part, though, it cuts away from the violence. And then it shows you the results of the violence. And then that's it. And I think that a lot of that just has to go to uh, budget. And not being able to get, like, fight coordinators and stunt work and things like that done. And it's really, it, I found it pretty disappointing, you know, because uh, the first season was good. Like, there were fights with Luke Cage that were interesting, um, and overall, that was a better season for sure. So, to me, this was a disappointment. Um, I'm probably going to lower my rating of Jessica Jones, like, at one point. I would say, I did say it was better than Iron Fist, but at this point, I mean, we'll have to see what comes out of the Iron Fist story, but for now, I would say Jessica Jones is rated below Iron Fist as far as the uh, Marvel Netflix series go, and I honestly, I don't think it's worth watching anymore if they're going to continue this. Maybe if they did something new for the third season. Uh, brought in a more compelling villain, uh, was ex more exciting from the very beginning, and actually spent some money on some special effects and some stunts and some fight coordination. It would be more interesting, but as far as this goes, like, I mean, if you think there's too many Netflix series of Marvel shows or whatever, this is one you could definitely skip um, and just wait to see her in The Defenders. So that's Jessica Jones, Season 2, uh, available on Netflix now, and I would say it's something you can skip. Um, as far as the rating goes, I'll give it a thumbs down, and if I was rated out of 10, I'd say it's about a 6 out of 10. It's watchable, but it's not very interesting, and if you don't have the time to watch all the shows, this is the one that you can drop. So thank you, and have a nice day. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe, or all of the above.